It's uh, Monday the 27th of August um, and I'm sitting on top of Mount Katahdin which is the northern terminus of the Appalachian Trail. Uh, in English that means I'm now an Appalachian Trail through hiker <coughs> which is a very very satisfying um, experience of one of a better word. You can just see the summit can up there. And also this incredible view. Um, it's about six o'clock in the morning. It might be a bit overexposed because the sun's just come up but um, you can probably see uh, the other route down the mountain or one of several routes down. That's the knife edge um, which you kind of follow over there and then go down. We're going down the same way we came up. Um, I was supposed to come up with the lasagna, but he didn't manage to get up. I, I actually left about 2.30 a.m. this morning in the dark, so pretty much came up all the way up in the dark with the sole intention of seeing the uh, sunrise, um, which I managed to do. Um, lasagna was saying yesterday that... Uh, because Katahdin is so high and it's so far east. He'd heard that it's the first point in the mainland United States to actually get sunlight. So if you're standing on top of it, you are in theory the first thing that the sun hits in the, in the morning. Whether there's any truth in this, I don't know. But uh, <coughs> it's quite a nice thought. Um, Uh, I actually walked up on my own, um, Juggles is probably on his way up, Thirsty's on his way up. Um, they weren't too concerned with getting up here for, for the sunrise, which is which is fair enough. Um, I think Thirsty was going to stay on uh, a little sort of plateau called the Tablelands, which is about two thirds of the way up. Uh, so I guess they're on the way up, so I'm going to wait for him up here. I've already been up here, it took about 2 hours 45 minutes to get up, so I've already been up here a couple of hours. I am actually up here with a guy called um, Banjo uh, Skunk Ape and another guy called Meat. I've already done with one video, I've, I've had to do another one because it's so windy, I'm sort of hunkered down behind some rocks here, but I'll take you up to see the, the finishing sign in a minute. Um, I've got to sort of sit here because you, <coughs> you probably won't hear my voice otherwise you just get a load of wind noise. Um, so four months and 30 days it's, it's, it's taken me, it's been a hell of a journey. Um, physically the, the, the most difficult thing I've, I've ever done in my life without a doubt. Um, way, way harder than expected. Um, pretty brutal in sections. And... Uh, emotionally, it's been a bit of a roller coaster as well, especially the last week. Um, a lot of emotions are surfacing. Um, and to be honest, uh, even sort of breaking down in tears at some point, just just thinking about stuff, it's it, it's really been pretty emotional the last week. Um, We were, well, we did the 100 mile wilderness which is the last sort of long long stretch and we we sort of popped out of the woods yesterday at a place called Awol Bridge um, where we got something to eat, stayed at the campground, yesterday we had a 10 mile walk into Katahdin, I think it's Katahdin Stream Campground where most, most through hikers stop, start their, their, their climb up Katahdin, it's about a 5 mile route going up about 4,000 feet. Um, it wasn't particularly difficult, um, it was actually a little bit easier than I thought it was going to be. It took about 2 hours and 45 minutes, all of it in the dark with a head torch. And we watched the sun come up which was pretty spectacular. Um, but uh, yesterday yesterday evening was quite a pleasant evening. We There was probably 15 of us um, around a campfire and a guy called Houdini who 
has an interest in the the native Indians, the the, the First Nations, and their um, their sort of ceremonies, that sort of thing. And he did what was called a smudge ceremony, where we all sat in a ring around the campfire, and <clears throat> he had a few little twigs of cedar tied together, which he lit. And smudging is when he sort of wafts the smoke over you. It's sort of like a purifying ceremony, that sort of thing. And it's in preparation for sort of people talking afterwards. He, he goes around and smudges everyone and then he, he hands the first person a feather. And you, you basically talk, the theory is that whoever's got the feather says what they need to say and nobody else interrupts. So it's not a lot of people conversing over each other. It's one person talking at a time and then it goes on to the next person. And we went around in a ring and said how we felt about the experience and afterwards you could still pass a feather around and one person each indiv individually would speak and there, you know there was a lot of emotions running high there was a few few jokes flying around um, but the whole idea was to talk about our experience and, and what we'd gained from it and why we threw hike um, and it, it, it came you know, the through hiking question it always comes back down to why, you know, why we do these through hikes. Why do we walk two, three thousand miles over, over several months? And to some extent, you get tired of answer, answering the question because a lot of the times you don't really have any answers. And, and most of the time, there's there's numer there's numerous reasons why I do it. Um, I think mainly because it's kind of a it's a it's, it's a life simplifying process to, to be out in the woods or the wilderness for six months. You your life is signified um, simplified hugely. Um, you obviously can't bring your material possessions. Everything you bring with you is in a is in a rucksack. And uh, as strange as it sounds, you can kind of. At, at times act as an impartial inv a, a, an impartial advisor and look back on the life you normally lead back home your, your working life your married life or, or, or whatever and you can <coughs> you just sort of act on as, as, as an observer you see what you what you're doing wrong how you can improve things one of the big things that jump jumps out is, is material possessions and how we seem to, to to strive to have this this need to, to buy things, um, whether it's a new car or a mobile phone or or whatever, we seem to derive pleasure from buying these things. Um, almost like that, that that's our purpose in life. That's what's supposed to make us happy. And I can fully understand. You know that 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 sort of opinion. I do it myself. You know, I have a uh, I have a nice cell phone and all that sort of thing. But when when you get out, you realise that you know material possessions aren't really it's satisfaction, but it's it's very very short lived. You know, a couple of days perhaps, and you know the novelty is worn off. So it's it, it sort of highlights that. Also, it's 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 immensely satisfying to spend that amount of time in the, in in the wilderness and in the woods. You do a lot of thinking. You get inside your head. Um, so l last night was quite a special evening. I'm glad Houdini was the, the the guy that performed the ceremony. It was quite a sweet evening, and everybody was speaking very fondly of it last night and this morning. And also a guy called Jonathan, who's the caretaker at the campsite, baked us a cake and brought it over in the evening, which is kind of sweet. Um, but it's, yeah, it has been an emotional roller coaster, as I say, physically extremely hard and emotionally, especially the last couple of weeks, I've had all sorts of things going through my head. Uh, you think about family. Um... The people that are close to you, and and where your life's been, and I guess where your life's where your life's heading as well. Um, 
and I guess it's culminated now, it's finished, uh, at least this trip's finished, the journey, call it your life journey I suppose, um, still carries on. I expect I'll do another one of these hikes, I love doing them, where that'll be I don't know, when it'll be I don't know. At the moment my focus is a few days ahead, we have to get back down off this big lump of rock and get to the nearest town. I'll probably go back uh, down to Florida to my friend's farm and probably work there for a bit. Physically I'm exhausted, I'm beaten up, I think we all are. I need to rest. I need to eat some good food. Probably go out for some running, do some yoga, enjoy the sunshine, do some writing. And then figure out the next move from there. But it has been an amazing experience and for anyone that's thinking of taking on the Appalachian Trail, it's uh, it's the first through hike or big through hike a lot of people do and it is a fantastic experience but I warn you it's it's hard, <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> um, thanks for everyone that's been watching the blog, the emails, uh, it's always nice to get to get emails from people, old friends, you know, new faces pop up and that sort of thing. I should write the, start writing the book in earnest within the next couple of weeks and, and hopefully have it done by spring of, of next year, if not before. Um, but I'll, I'll walk you up to the, to the sign, the Katahdin sign, where everybody gets their photo taken. Uh, the guys are probably still up there, so I'll, uh, I'll point the camera down at there and I'm sure they'll wave as well. Um, but let's take you back up and have a look at the sign. And it'll be the last video, job's done. As I said, we're bounding a lot of wind noise up here, so I don't mind going around talking. You probably won't be able to hear me, but uh, I'll take you to see the sign. <laughs> <laughs>